everybody and welcome to another exciting installment of Wrestling Rampage. The two amigos are back in this motherfucker. That's right. We are back and we are doing, Tommy, a classic pay-per-view. Yes. Of the WCW variety. Yes. But we ain't going to do a video saying how bad 91 was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. Well, and, we're close to it. We're close to it. that right, Preacher Man. <laughs> the Preacher Man. Um, I to hang you home. <laughs> Did you watch the Sting moment? <laughs> I want to be just like him. I want to be just like him. And I want to be part of the mighty uh, Maccabees or whatever <laughs> kind of name that group was. The mighty, uh, who is it? The mighty uh, uh, Jeremiah's, I think. Yeah. Something like that. And then they brought in the new anchor, Gemini. <laughs> well, Gemini. Hang your hell around. Hey, black, black shirt <laughs> in my motor cross. <laughs> 25 cents. Anyway. Like candy machine. <laughs> Yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's uh, get started. Yeah. We're doing WCW. And by the way, it's winter time right now. So, yes. so, so, so it's a little cold. But who gives a shit? But we're going to do it anyway. We're, we're doing, doing, we're doing it in the cold, baby. Yeah, yeah, and we're in the cold. So you, if you're trying to go swimming in this time, you ain't fucking getting nowhere. Unless you're in Florida or something yeah, Unless like you're down in Florida. Uh, yeah, we don't know about that. WCW Beach Blast 92. This is the pay-per-view review for you guys. We watched it uh, off of um, a recording. Yeah. From W. Uh, was it WWE Twenty Four Seven? Yeah. Classics on demand. Classics on demand. Um, very low, uh, low volume though. That's 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 back in the day for you. But anyway, uh, June twentieth. We can still hear it though. We can still hear it. June twentieth, nineteen ninety two. Tommy, uh, we actually have commentary as well as hosts of this show yeah, so we it's do. two different things for the hosts that start off not your host with the most ghosts yeah, 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 yeah not them uh, not him for sure but we got the host of tony shivani and tony shivani looked like he shopped at the pga tour uh uh store there gonna hit some golf there, tony right afterwards right afterwards. uh and and it looks like uh, Eric Bischoff shopped at the Don Morocco School of Hawaii. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, fucking Eric Bischoff is, is, has has a sweet ass Hawaiian T-shirt on. Damn right. Uh, with his uh, uh, and by the way, this is this is actually uh, a few years before he becomes the executive uh, producer. Yes. Of uh, of uh, WCW. And, and then on commentary, we have good old Jim Ross, good also old, Good old t-shirt. Jim Ross, good old JR. He's wearing, he's sporting the Don Morocco gear. Mm-hmm. You know, the Hawaiian shirt. He looks like he's ready to go for this Beach Blast 92 card. And then here comes. Well, hold on. We'll get to that during oh, the beginning. Oh, yeah. We'll get to his, uh, his partner here. His partner during uh, 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 the beginning here. But, Tommy, we're at the. Uh, Mobile Civic Center in, in Mobile, Mobile, Alabama. Alabama. The Alabama Slammer. Uh, or, uh, well, well, we do know a fat fucking Alabama. Oh, we sure do. I wonder if he was here. Uh. Well, Ric Flair was here, <laughs> but wasn't here, so he probably wasn't there. He probably wasn't there. He didn't get free tickets. Tommy, for the dark match, we actually have a six-man yes. tag team attraction. The dark match is a six-man tag team attraction, as we see... The Junkyard Dog. Listen, I love the Junkyard Dog. I like dog. JYD too, but he was out of shape at this time. He had the big beer gut and just couldn't move worth the day. Yeah, like he used to. It, it looked pretty bad. And uh, his partners is Big Josh and Tom Zink. As they A take very on, unlikely duo, to be yes, honest with you. As they take on the trio of Richard Morton, Tracy Smothers, and Diamond Dallas Page. Kind of another odd pairing. Odd pairing. And your winners of the six man added match <laughs> Junkyard Dog, Big Josh, and Tom Zink. Uh, and Tommy, who did uh, Big Josh uh, end up being later on down the road? Doink the Clown. Doink the Clown, yes. Um, who did Tom Zink become? Z Man. <laughs> Z Man. Oh, he probably was Z Man here too, but, yeah. but what else did he become? He's part of Can Am Connection. That team sucked. Yes, it did. Tito was better. 
<laughs> Tito. Oh, I'm being honest, he was. And uh, this is the early days of WC uh, of D Diamond Dallas Page yeah, wrestling. So, actually. Yeah, so this is his uh, start here. Yeah, so uh, to see that, uh, just just an unlikely, just a blase six man tag with random people. Yeah. Now, uh, to start off the show, we actually have Tony Schiavone and Eric Bischoff as they run down the show. Yes. And they have uh, the esteemed vice president of WCW. of WCW. Here he comes, baby. Cowboy Bill Watts rocking the fanny pack, the sweatpants, and the WCW crew shirt. Has <laughs> a WCW crew on it. He's wearing a fucking fanny pack. That's right. Sweats. We're going to hook him up. <laughs> we We're going to hook him up. Let's hook him up then. Yes, please. Let's hook him up. Come on, Bill. <laughs> Which way do you turn him, Bill? And then uh, Tommy. We actually have, a, uh, they take it to Jim Ross, and Jim Ross introduces his... His broadcast partner. Yes. Here he comes out, rocking a fucking tank top and some fucking black shorts and, and fucking uh, scars all over him. It's Jesse Ventura who couldn't get up out of a fucking Hawaiian sh ja a chair. He, he almost tripped. You see him try to get it? He almost fell out of it? They show him... Uh, with, with a cu couple of fucking... Fucking beach broads here. Yeah. Like uh, fucking Baywatch. He was sitting there on the entrance way where the fucking deck is. Yeah, and he's sitting in one of those goddamn fucking horrible... Beach chairs. I call them horrible beach chairs. Yes, yes. It looked like they got it from fucking Five Below or something. And then he tried to get out of it. And, and he, he almost fell out, out of it yeah. trying to get up. So the so the beach broads had to help him up there. Now, come on, Jesse. Jesse goes, yeah! yeah. Cheer for me! Cheer. And we walk out of the ring. He goes in the ring, walks on the other side, goes to Jim Ross. <laughs> it one side out the other goes Jesse Ventura out of the ring. <laughs> he, he, he walks down the ring, gets into the ring, and then gets out of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, with Jim Same time, there. I guess. Uh, but uh, I will say this. I do like the stage. Yeah, the stage is pretty good. I do like the beach set up there. Yeah, they got the beach set up there. You know, they got the beach chairs, the sand, the, the boardwalk yeah. decks, palm Under trees. The bowl, bowl. And then they got that infamous ramp. Yeah, the infamous ramp, yeah. That they had uh, pretty much all through about like... 94 almost. Yeah, about 94 is when they like actually got rid of that ramp. Which, uh, I, I enjoyed the ramp. Yeah, I did too. But Tom, we actually got the first match on the card. We have, for the WCW Light Heavyweight Championship, the champion, Flying Brian Pillman. Yes, as the reigning and defending WCW Light Heavyweight Champion, Flying Brian Pillman defends his... WCW Light Heavyweight Championship against Scotty the Body, Scotty Flamingo. Scotty oh, Flamingo, yeah. yeah. Oh, now Tommy, some people may not know who Scotty Flamingo is. Well, who Scotty is Scotty Flamingo is Raven. Yes. Uh, uh, Former this, uh, Johnny Polo. Uh, uh, later uh, on in 93 and 94, he is uh, Johnny, Polo. Johnny Polo in the WWF. And, uh, pretty much, I think the only thing he really did was kind of Manage. He did and, wrestle a few. He wrestled a little bit, uh, but he got his notable fame in 94 95 for becoming Raven. Yep, in ECW. Uh, all the way up till he quit and went to WCW. Yeah, which so, was pretty disheartening. Yes, yes. I bet you Scotty wish he'd never chose that option. Now, Tommy, on, on the. Uh, <laughs> of course, this is the infamous dubbing. Uh, oh, yeah. Tommy. Uh, Brian Pillman comes out and... Oh, he comes out to his fucking 95. WCW uh, 95 thing. Blondes have more fun. He likes them busty, he likes them curvy. He likes them like blondes or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, blondes have more fun. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't his song in 1992. No, just, yeah, I don't know why. But you know, you know, they're almost like Peacock. I do bet you. Yeah, they got and They're at you. cockles. You gotta ruin a fucking wild card game. You gotta put that on Peacock, don't you? But I will Who the fuck is gonna watch a... I, I want to say something. Who the fuck is going to watch a wild card game on Peacock? I don't know. Why the fuck are you going to put it on the cock? By the way, cock sucks. Okay? Don't I matter. It. I'm being honest. I'll watch the snippets on YouTube. Like, I'm sorry. I, I just don't like Peacock. I don't know. Because they butcher shit. Yeah! If they're right, you're fucking butcher in '94, ain't you, bitch? Yeah. They butcher the footage. Yeah. They, but, they butcher WWE Network. They butcher the footage. They but, Well, it's true. They butcher WWE Network. I agree. I agree. Oh, fuck you, Peacock. Take your feathers this. and fly away. Between, uh, between Brian Pillman and Scotty Flamingo, pretty good match. Yeah, I thought this was a good opening match. Really fast pace, uh, as well as Tommy. Uh, one of the things that's very interesting about this time in 92 is Bill Watts being the vice yep. president of WCW. 
He actually incorporated some rules. Oh, you, oh yeah, let me do what Bill Watts did. Of course, we got to have some rules. That's rules. That means you can't go off the top rope. No. That's more. a DQ. Who the fuck does that? Yeah, apparently you cannot do an, uh, a, a... A top rope maneuver. Second rope? Ta perfectly legal. Oh, second rope, perfectly legal. But if you go to that fucking top rope, it's a sin. Yeah. And then also, Tommy... And then, and then no padding, which I had no problem with. Fuck, go ahead. On the outside, he takes away the pads. Which I had no problem with that one, at least. Well, I don't know, man. People, like, uh, during this match... Well, was... actually, yeah. Now now yeah. looking back on it, yeah. Scotty Flamingo got his legs caught on the rope, right? And he's kind of, like, laying down on the, on, on the apron. And you see Pillman just move his legs and he falls on his head. Yeah. On the damn concrete. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, that's the reason why they got the pads. That's why they got the padding there, Bill. This ain't fucking Mid-South. <laughs> yeah. Uh... wrestling in glorified hot... Well, well, this is WCW 92. <laughs> this is WCW 92, uh... I will say this, overall, this, this pay-per-view wasn't that bad. No, this but, pay-per-view wasn't that bad. Um, we see uh, we see a couple of dives. Yeah. Uh, Brian Pillman does a back suplex off the second rope. Second rope. Perfectly legal. Not perfectly top rope. Perfectly legal move, there. Second rope. Perfectly legal on the Scotty, Scotty Flamingo. Um, Air Pillman oh, on no, that, that was brutal. Yes, uh, Tommy, he literally... Uh, Fucking Scotty Flamingo ducks. He's on the ramp. He's on the ramp. Scotty Flamingo ducks. And Pillman does a big dive. And fucking hits head first into the ramp. He eats shit on that ramp. Head first into the ramp. Scotty Flamingo's in the ring. You see Pillman crawling into the ring. And fucking... And, and then we see Scotty Flamingo does one of the worst middle rope knee drops I've ever seen in my life. Barely hit Pillman. Actually, I don't think he hit it. He hit him in the, in, in the, in the side, and, then, and it looked horrible. And then fucking Scotty Flamingo pins Brian Pillman. One, two, three. So your winner and new WCW Light Heavyweight Champion, Scotty Flamingo with a Saint by the Bell tights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Saint by the Bell tights. Um, um, weren't those I enjoyed years? <laughs> today. Leave it on the edge of tomorrow. Um, the body. The body. Uh, and then, Tommy, I will say this. Overall, I did like the match. Yeah, this was a good match. But that but that last part, the yeah. fucking... That horrible fucking knee drop. The second row uh, fucking knee drop. It looked like shit. I'm sorry. It looked like shit. I'm sorry. But, but the match was good after that. But it kind of... But it was a decent... I thought it was a decent opening. It was a good opening match. Good opening match, though. So, new WCW Light Heavyweight Champion, Scotty, the body, Flamingo. That's right. Next time we have... Here comes Johnny B. Bad. Don't want to make him mad. His pretty ass picture. I don't know what the fuck he's wearing. <laughs> don't be fooled by his looks. Uh, Tommy, he is the... the mean left Sable. <laughs> Sable. Uh, Tommy, he is the MC yeah. of this competition. This, uh, yeah, this competition here. They called it, what, a bikini, bikini uh, contest or whatever. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, Between Medusa and Missy Hyatt. And I guess uh, Johnny B. Bad is the MC here. Yes. So uh, they're wearing dresses for the first go around here. Yeah, uh, so Missy comes out with a gown. And here comes fucking Medusa with what look like a fucking wedding dress, it if looked, you ask me. It like a wedding dress. With a fucking veil covering her face there. Now, Tommy, the only way that you could vote for this... Oh, the only way you could vote, I'll tell you right now. I mean, I'm going to give it a... Big plug. I remember WCW Saturday Night 99 2000. I bet, I bet you did. Oh, yeah. You could, if you want to vote, you call the WCW hotline. That's 1 900 909 9900. But it's blankety blankety blank. Yeah, but, uh, yeah on, 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 it hasn't blurred out the yeah. number. But Tommy remembers Oh, I know that fucking number by heart. <coughs> uh, probably doesn't work, so don't call it. Yeah, don't call that shit. Uh, but uh, nothing really happens. They just walk out and Johnny and show, Bad. And strut their stuff in fucking dresses and move on. And pretty much he said, just call the, the yeah, hotline. Yeah, Johnny and... Bank goes, call that fucking number down there. Can you see blankety blankety blank? Huh? Can you see it, Steve? <laughs> and then, Tommy, we get the second man. <laughs> show the card. We have... Oh, yeah, the second bout of the evening here is the Taylor Made Man, which is Terry Taylor. The wrestler of the 90s. That's right, the wrestler of the 90s. Yes. The tailor-made man, Terry Taylor. Yes. As he takes on... With the Red Rooster? The Porter Robbins, Georgia's native. The Florida State Sentinel. 
the All-American Ron Simmons. There we go, Ron Simmons, baby. Uh, which eventually would become Farouk. That's right, I'm going to be honest. WWF. Yes. To me, all this match was to me was to get Ron Simmons over. Absolutely. And what Give a was short. And, and what a better pro. I'm, I'm, like people and Terry Taylor's Taylor. a decent worker. Yeah, people shit on Terry Taylor. But he's, a, he's a decent worker. He's a competent wrestler, okay? Yeah. So he, so he, he he'll can be get able Ron to get Simmons over. over. Yes. Uh, and pretty much that's what this match was. Decent short match. Yep. Uh, pretty much showed off... Uh, the power uh, of Ron Simmons. The power of Ron Simmons and, and his athletic ability. Um, Does a couple of uh, knee clips. Some knee clips. Uh, he ends up whipping... Uh, the Taylor made man into the rope. Big yeah. power slam Big power by power. the All American Ron Simmons. One, two, three. There it is. There Your it is. winner, the All American Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons. And Tommy, you know, people and always. A, and a pretty decent little short match here. You know, pretty little decent short match here. And, you know, people talk, want to sit there and shit on Bill Watts and call him a racist and all this shit. Uh, this is under Bill Watts' yeah. regime. Uh, he's getting Ron Simmons over. Yeah. You know, uh, if he was racist, he wouldn't be getting somebody like Ron Simmons over. Well, you see, we're talking about people that don't know that don't know the wrestling business. You know, so. And around this time, Ron Simmons becomes WCW champion. He so. does, and that's under Bill Watts. Yes. Uh, Tommy Jim Ross uh, interviews uh, Ron Simmons on oh, the outside. Oh, Ron Simmons with great powerful words. He got me motivated. <laughs> yes, he did. What he did says, Ron say? He don't care what color you are or what creed you are or what sex you are. If, if just work to your best of your ability. And, 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 and I want to be WCW champion. That's about the end. Pretty much that's it. You know, very motivational speaking from Ron Simmons. You can always live your dream and all this. Ron Simmons cutting a great promo there. And, this is... Uh, you know, you don't see us very often, but babyface Ron Simmons, you know. Yeah, babyface Ron Simmons. Most of most time when he was in WWF, he was always a heel, heel most of the time. Except yeah. for APA, but he was pretty much just drinking most of the time with Bradshaw. Yeah, what else but, is there to do? But a pretty motivational yeah. uh, uh, promo for Ron Simmons. Let's go to the next match. Tommy, and probably, you'll have to agree with this, probably the worst match on the card. Oh, the worst match <laughs> on the fucking show is right here, right now. As we have Marcus Alexander Bagwell versus Greg the Hammer Valentine. I didn't know he was here in 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like. It looked like. You know what his tights and shit and his get up look like? Look like the same shit he wore on Beyond the Mat. <laughs> the hammer on the yeah, ass. Yeah, the hammer on the ass. And Jake's putting a roofie down his fucking tights. <laughs> putting a roofie down his tights. Have you seen the Beyond the Mat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to put it on Instagram and show you. <laughs> well, you have the DVD, so you can do it. <laughs> uh, to, like, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, I know in 91... He was in WWF. He was in WWF. I guess he left in 91. Now, I know in 1990, he was part. He was with Rhythm and Blues with yep. the Honky Tonk Man. And then 91, he was basically a fan favorite. And he went back to himself with the fucking, you know, yep. the fucking long blonde hair and shit. So I guess he got released around this time and came and came to the uh, WCW. And I will say this, listen. Greg, Greg's a decent worker. Greg's a pretty good worker. It's just... This man. I just find him just boring to this, me. No, there was one person that was highly invested. <laughs> highly invested in this match. Of course you're going to bring this guy up. Yeah, you damn right I am. He was highly invested in this match. He's a big Greg No, fan. I don't know if he was a Greg or a Marcus No, no, fan. no, no. He, he had to be Oh, a yeah, Greg he didn't give a fuck about Marcus. Yeah, he, he didn't give a fuck about Marcus. Yeah, fuck, fuck Buzz hair. <laughs> fuck Buzz hair. You know, he, goes, he didn't give a fuck about floppy hair. <laughs> <laughs> This, there was one guy that was highly invested in this Marcus Alexander Bagwell and Greg the Hammer Valentine match. We should mention, very boring match, oh, yeah. and Greg's working on the legs. It was boring as shit. This was probably the shittiest match on the show. And then, Tommy, what's happening in the background, in the in, in the front row? Oh, one fan. It's fucking, he's having an uproar. His name is Hillbilly Bone. <laughs> you seen Hillbilly Bone? <laughs> It's some guy in overalls <laughs> and, a, and a fucking baseball cap like Tommy's. Well, mine's more cool. <laughs> I had a skull on it. Yours probably had something else on it. It's stupid. In 92. Oh, it had a tractor on it or something? 
and fucking hillbilly Bowen was going in an uproar for Greg here. And especially, and especially Greg, when it was time for the finish. You the see how thrilled he was. Finish. No, oh, you see. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, break the motherfucker's leg. Floppy hair bag will break his leg. Not on the deal. Break his damn leg. And you know what? Greg Valentine gets Marcus Alexander Bagwell, floppy hair Bagwell, in the uh, figure four leg lock. And you see the hair flapping in the wind from Bagwell giving up. So uh, your winner, Greg the Hammer Valentine, in a pretty <coughs> fucking match. Absolutely the worst match on the show. Yes. Very boring. Didn't like it. But Greg wins over Bagwell. And Hillbilly Bone is happy. And Hillbilly Bone, Bone, the Bone, Bone is happy. He's happy, boy. Well, would that, uh, ain't it just right here time that he is about past his prime to wrestle anyway? This is 92. So. This is 92. I mean, he was still <clears throat> in his 40s. But, I mean, his time for him being in his prime is pretty much past. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, he could still go. It's just, you've seen Greg since the fucking... Well, 80s and 70s. You know, he always was a slow starter anyway. Absolutely. Then. But let's go with the next one, Tommy. This is a Falls Count Anywhere match. Yes. A Falls Count Anywhere match. Which you don't see very often no. at this time. As we see Cactus Jack with Mr. Bang Bang, which wasn't the theme at this time. Yeah, he, he goes out to Mr. Bang Bang, which wasn't his theme song at uh, this particular time. As he takes on, and of course this is a non-title match. Yes, non-title. So, throw that in there. And his opponent, the reigning the reigning WCW World Heavyweight Champion, Sting! Sting. Sting. He does this, he does that. <laughs> He's big as a trough and quick as, not quick as a cat anymore, but <laughs> nah, he don't he, look fine and look cool either anymore. No, nah, now he's he's as big as a bull and as fast as a cat. And uh but but I'm gonna say this right now. This Falls Count Anywhere match was fucking great. It was damn good. And this was a great Falls Count Anywhere match. I highly recommend you check this match out. And like this match right here was the deciding factor for me of like why do you got not have pads? Why is this like this? Because, and, and, you know, this always brings up the whole thing of how Mick Foley is today. Yeah. How he can barely limp around. He can barely get around. Uh, hell, for crying out loud, he's even he's even admitted to the point where he can't even raise his legs to put on his socks. Yeah. His, his wife has to put on his socks. Um... You know, one of the first things we see is, is and, and this is on the ramp. They it, start they, out on the ramp. They start out on the ramp. He whips him to the rope. He bounces off the rope. Big fucking back And drop. you hear the thud. And you hear that thud on that fucking ramp. It's and like, then, God. And then Sting hits the big bulldog face first on the ramp on Cactus. Yep. They're fighting on the outside. Uh, they go through the barricade. They go through the barricade. Fucking Sting does, sets him up. Do, does the shark bites? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he does Big suplex. Big suplex on the concrete. On the concrete on the where concrete. the fans are. One, two, cactus kitsch out. Some fucking oaf is trying to count like fucking Bill Alfonso here, like an idiot. Yes. In his fucking shitty goddamn woman's fucking shorts. You see, those shorts look like women's shorts. This is the nineties, pal. <laughs> And look like he came festive for the theme. He's wearing a beach shirt. <laughs> he is wearing a beach shirt. Uh, and then fucking, then fucking Sting whips Cactus into the into the uh, steel guardrail. He takes a big old bump, side first, on the fucking on concrete. the concrete. You could t like this is the reason why Mick can't get around now for crying out loud. Uh, like hell, we even seen him dive off the damn apron. Like yep, he, like the with big the elbow. elbow. Around right the concrete. Right there on the concrete. It's like, on the steam. But it ends with Tommy, uh, they get back on the ramp. Yes. Big clothesline Sting, Sting. with a running start. Hits a big clothesline. Sting comes into the ring. Gets on the top rope. Hits the big clothesline off the top rope. Sting's safe. <laughs> he slides. He's safe. Covers Cactus Jack. One, two, three. And your winner, Sting over Cactus Jack. In a really good Falls Count Anywhere match. It was a really good Falls Count Anywhere match. I really and enjoyed it. And you hear Cactus it. screaming. 
Yeah. Um, it was a really good uh, Falls Count Anywhere match. I good, enjoyed. but it also brings back to me looking at. And I was cringing now. every time he took bumps like that. Yeah, you're just you you're, you're watching this man fall on concrete, and it's not good. We're on the fucking ramp. Or, I mean, the ramp has the ramp. A, at least there's well, a little bit of padding, but not much. A little bit of padding. But not much. I mean, still, like you can it's hear that. a little more. Uh, yeah, you can hear, hear that thud. thud. Uh, it's just like, damn, and you know, you're wondering, this is why he's like this now. Um, we well, also got to look at it too. You know, he's the one that took the most bumps. You know, you, you know, you ain't gonna hurt, hurt your money maker. But, but, but again, you this was a great match. Great match. Let's I highly go. recommend you check out that Falls oh, County. Oh, abs match. Absolutely. Next match, we have a 30 minute. Iron Man Challenge. Yes, Challenge. as we have. Ravishing Rick Rude, who is the reigning United States champion. The, the, the WCW, WCW United, United States, States champion. champion. But the title's not on the line in this match. As he takes on... He's a family man. Ooh. Here comes Richie and Bonnie with him. <laughs> and here's Richie with his chubby cheeks. <laughs> and there's his wife. Bonnie tells him what to do. <laughs> true, um, yeah, uh, 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 Rick Rude has that great song that we love. Oh, yeah. Uh, simply Ravishing. And then here comes Family Man. Yeah, and then here comes fucking Ricky, right? With but Family Man song. Now, I don't... No, no, it wasn't the Family Man. No. It was his... Uh, it, it was the Chicago Bulls of the 90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, so no, it was the doo doo doo. No, 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 no. It was. Well, it I was, don't fucking know. I didn't give a fuck about music at no, that time. No. But I think at this time he was using Family Man. I have no idea why they didn't use that. Because right, they, they dubbed it like I always do. Now, I will say this family, the Family Man theme song sucks balls. Uh, if but, you guys don't know what we mean, type in WCW. Family Man, Ricky, Ricky Steamboat. Steamboat. And you'll hear the fucking You'll hear song. that shitty song. It fucking sucks. Uh, and like Tommy says, he's bringing out his wife. He's bringing out Richie. Yep. Uh, and you saw how much rude to give a fuck about Richie or Bonnie. <laughs> Here he comes going after Rick, Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat, wait, let me get the wife and son out of the way. And Rick, and Rick Rude goes, fuck your wife and son. <laughs> he, he died at Brock Lesnar. Richie barely got out yeah, of the Richie ring. Richie barely got out of that ring before fucking Rick. Rick Rude went after him, right. and fucking Ricky got pissed off, because what do you do? Swah! 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 Big ass chops, couple of head chops, you see Rude selling like a son of a bitch with those chops. <laughs> and then he went to the rope. <laughs> this, this was a really good 30 minute Iron Man match. This was an awesome Iron Man match. And, 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 and Ricky Steamboat and Rick Rude are both good workers, and they put on a great... A great Iron Man match. Uh, we have, uh, so about eight minutes in, about 22 minutes left. Um, Steamboat, uh, Steamboat gets into the ring, and um, uh, Rude, uh, they get into the ring, and uh, uh, Rude is in the turnbuckle. Yeah. And Steamboat's running towards him at the turnbuckle. And Steamboat Rick Rude hits the big knee. Right there in the head. Raises the knee up. And then uh, rolls him up, pulls the tights, one, two, three, and Rick Rude gets the first fall. First fall. And then one minute later, he goes, fuck this, we're doing, a, we're doing it one more big time. He grabs him, the Rude Awakening. Rude Awakening. Uh, and uh, uh, takes him one, two, three. Pins him one, so two, three. So he's 2 0 right now. He's 2 0. Then one minute later, Rude goes, fuck this, he gets to the top rope. Hits the big knee drop from the top rope, so that's a DQ, so Steamboat gets a free win here. Yeah, so as you guys know, it is illegal to do something and off the Rick top rope. And Rick Rude goes, I don't give a fuck. I don't I'm going to down. Picks him up, gets him in a small package. One, two, three. One, two, three. So it's 3-1 right now. Rick Rude's winning. And then we get down to, there's 12 minutes left. Uh, Ricky reverses. Sweat all over the ring. <laughs> yeah, sweat all over the ring. Uh, uh, Ricky reverses uh, into a pile driver. And gets a gets a fall. Yep. So it's two three. Two three, and then uh, in uh, with nine minutes left, Tommy Ricky hits him with the backslide. Yeah, yeah, he won with the backslide. Yeah, he won with the backslide. One two three, and Steamboat has tied it up. Three and three, and then the last three minutes, uh, Rick Rude has uh, Ricky Steamboat in the sleeper. Yes. And by the way, Paz is in there watching it at the time. Uh, I I loved it. Uh, Paz even actually watched this match with us. Um, 
La la last three minutes, Root is just cranking down on that damn sleeper. And, Steamboat uh, comes over to the corner, kicks himself. 40 oh, seconds in. Oh, 30 seconds in. He, c he goes to the turnbuckle, kicks himself off, hooks Rick Root's leg. One, two, three. So Steamboat's winning now, four, three. And then St Rick Root's trying to fucking hurry up and pin him and pin him with a couple seconds left. Yeah, and Steamboat literally. kicks out, kicks out, kicks out. Literally. Uh, Root only has 30 seconds to so, try to tie so this he's up. Been try he's trying to pin him like constantly. And Steve Oak just keeps kicking out, kicking out. Time expires. So your winner of the Iron Man Challenge is Ricky Steamboat the, the Dragon. Dragon. Who someone says their wor that his work is the shit. Fuck you, pal. Yeah, fuck you, pal. I guess you don't know wrestling, do you, you fucking oak? <laughs> fuck you. Stick to fucking boring ass video games. <laughs> I advise everybody. If you I, think, I'm being honest. <coughs> if you agree. think Steamboat's work is shit, watch, watch, watch that match. Just watch it. You'll what see. You'll, you you'll see. Ricky you'll Steamboat see great bad, two great shit. wrestlers the in the ring together. Get the fuck out of here. Stick to your fucking boring ass video games. Uh, talk about the shitty ones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tommy, next one we have is Johnny B. Bad. You don't well, want to hear he comes man. back out uh, in a different attire. Yeah, a different attire. I don't fucking uh, remember. One, he was a cowboy. Then he was fucking something else. And then he was something else. He was a peacock. Or or yeah, he's a peacock. Speaking of peacock. <laughs> and, 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 he's the MC for the second one. Yeah. And then Tommy, this is the swimsuit edition. Yeah, this is the swimsuit edition. Here comes Missy Hyde in her fucking blue swimsuit. Like, we haven't even seen that before. Yeah. And, uh, and then here comes fucking Medusa and some look, fucking... Look, looking like a biker. Yeah, looking like a fucking biker with her swimsuit on. And, yeah. and Johnny, B. Gale, Johnny B. Bad says, call that blankety blankety blank number and let's move on. Yeah, blankety blank number and we'll move on from there. Uh, next time we have a six-man uh, a six man attraction match. Yes, as we have a big six-man tag with... Bobby Eaton. Well, hold on. We have a special guest referee. For oh, this. yeah, we do have a special guest referee. Oh, Sour Puss Ole Anderson. <laughs> Sour Puss Ole Anderson yeah. is a special guest referee for yeah, this Yeah, boy. You can see his veins are popping. <laughs> Ain't that right? I almost look like fucking, uh, remember the goddamn referee on on uh, Flair and Race? Gene Konitsky almost looked like it in that ring, didn't he? Didn't he? You make fun of Gene. Well, like is that. it true? Yeah. God, do you see fucker, fucker Ole looking like a fucking oaf like he is? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's bitter for some reason. I think he's just bitter because he's an old bastard. Quit being so damn dumb. Anyway. I enjoy when you make fun of fucking uh, that guy. And Dave Melson? Yeah. Quit being so damn dumb. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, he should call old, old somebody being dumb. Close veins. Only Anderson's the referee here. So we got a six man tag. It's Bobby Eaton, Arn Anderson, and the WCW television champion, stunning Steve Austin with. Paul Lee Dangerously. So pretty much the Dangerous Alliance. Yes. As they take on the trio of Nikita Koloff, Dustin Rhodes, and Barry Windham. I like that you said Like Tom, uh, Tom, uh, what's Tom his Miller, name? Tom Miller, baby. Tom Miller, that's right. Ring announcers all. He's up there with fucking Howard Finkel. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Barry Windham. Anyway. That's right. Uh, Tommy, I'm going to be honest with you. About this match. I was actually getting into the match. I thought this was going to be better than what it was. Well, yeah. I considering everybody involved. Yeah, because all six of these guys could be decent workers. You all know, Nikita can work okay. Nikita, if he's in there with somebody yeah. that could Well, he's in there work. with people that could actually work, so he could get a pass. He, he could pass. I don't know why he's from Lithuania, though. But. <laughs> uh, Barry, great. Dustin, Dustin great. great. Bobby, great. Arn, great. Austin, great. And this is, and by the way, guys, if you guys don't know, if you guys want to check out Austin's stuff, Stone Cold Steve Austin's stuff, in WCW, you can actually see how good of a wrestler he was. Steve Austin was before he got his knees blown out uh, by the time he got to the yeah. WWF. Uh, Austin was fanta a fantastic wrestler in WCW, and I can't stress that enough. Um, like I said, it was okay. Like, I thought it was a decent six-man tag, but when the finish happened, I was like, you know what? Screw this match now. I thought it would have been better than what it, it was. It could have been better than what it could have been. Anyway, what happened is, um, we see, um, all hell breaks loose. 
And Oli's just looking around. Of course you know, all six people are in the fucking room. Like, hey, uh, hey, Bill, you like this? <laughs> Bill, you like this, Bill? Uh, we're hooking it up here. <laughs> Let me grab these blue, blue black ropes. Blue, black, yellow ropes. Because I'm... You see the veins? <laughs> Fuck you, Oli. <laughs> Uh, he was a horrible fucking referee. I'm sorry. He was. Anyway. Was he? Yes. Barry Windham does a superplex. From the top rope. Was it the top? Yeah, it was from the top. But of course, Ollie's so stupid he can't see. Was it, was it really? Yeah, it was from the top. But he, he's fucking looking at other fucking people. Because he's like, huh? Uh, horseman. <laughs> and he does a superplex to Steve Austin. And then and then and then he finally looks around, sees Arn off the top row, hits a big double axe handle on Barry Windham. And so he goes, wait a minute. Did he go off the top row bald arm? Uh, even though we're cousins. <laughs> Ring that fucking bell. Oh, oh, right. oh now you see it, don't you? Glare of close veins. And then you see Arn get get in his face. Yeah, Arn goes, What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? With them star tights. <laughs> Fucking bright, poopy brown star tights. What the fuck are you talking about? And then, and then fucking, uh, so, your winners, via DQ, Barry, Win Barry Windham, Dustin Rhodes, and Nikita Koloff, to me, the finish killed this fucking match for me. I thought it would have been better. I thought, I thought it, it could have been, been better what it could have been. Uh, next time we have Eric Bischoff. Uh, interviews Ricky the or oh, sorry Ricky Steamboat the Dragon. Yeah, Ricky's got his hair all flopped up, you know. Yeah, I had a grueling thirty minute match, you know. And pretty much interviews say how you know glad that it you know then, how the match went. And a stuff. great match and all this, and then here comes Paulie Dangerously. He just he just got done managing a match that could have been better. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he comes out says you ain't never getting a U.S. title match with Rick Rude and all this. And fucking Ricky Steamboat goes, listen here, ECW. <laughs> and, and then here comes Cactus Jack and uh, Steamboat going at it, cause I guess I guess Paul paid Cactus Jack and big and Woo Coin or or something. I don't know. And they're fucking uh, so they're having a big old smaz. And then that's about the end of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Cactus Jack comes out and attacks Ricky and way down. And uh, yep, and that's uh, about the end of that. Yep, you see Steamboat yep. fly with the chop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Tommy, we get the last of this. Jesus Christ. We get the last of this fucking contest here. Uh, Jesse Ventura. Yeah, he's up. jealous for some fucking yeah, reason. Yeah. I would be jealous. I'd be sitting him down and wouldn't give two shits. Yeah, let me, let me sit, sit with old JR myself. Yeah, fuck. Uh, he goes, you know what? Jay be bad ain't gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna be... The so they one both one. do it for some fucking Yeah, reason. here comes Johnny. So we got Jesse and Johnny. Uh, as Jesse they, and Johnny. Did you did you hear what uh what Jesse asked? Yeah, does he like girls? Yeah, he, he goes, uh, Giant even like girls? Yeah, I was like, God damn. It's like damn man. I was like, damn they're a biker van <laughs> Um As we get to the third contest this was which the is bikini. The bikini contest. Um Medusa comes out in some uh some fucking bikini. Uh, oh, it's like a red, white, and blue bikini. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tommy, as they were going to get mi uh, Missy. She goes, there's nothing in my envelope. You've done this all day. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> somebody stole it out of the envelope. It ain't here no more. And uh, she pulls off Jesse's scarfs that he had on his head. And fucking makes fucking bikinis out of those. And I guess uh, and Jesse's like, oh, I don't give a fuck. I got them for $1.99 a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> Two cents. <laughs> And, and so uh, and so uh, so I guess Missy Hyatt won the bikini contest for some fucking reason. I didn't see no nine nine hundred nine oh nine 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 hundred there. Yeah, we didn't we, we didn't see it there from the hotline. Yeah, so how the fuck do you know she won? Woohoo! Let's move on. Fuck the contest. Let's go to the main event. Well, Johnny Bad thinks uh, thinks Missy won, and uh, Jesse. Oh yeah, I forgot. Thinks... Mm -hmm. Then fucking uh fucking uh Jesse goes in the fucking fucking. Fucking lifeguard tent with fucking uh, Medusa. Medusa and say she's the fucking winner of fucking the Cause her, contest. Because her top came off. Yeah, and I was like, who gives a fuck? And by the way, this is, this is also the time where Medusa had little titties, by the way. Well, I didn't give a fuck because I wasn't interested. You remember in late WCW, she had the big old juggins. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, anyway. had, she had the gazangas. She had the fake tits. And, no, uh, no, I'll be honest. I didn't get two fucks about this. Yeah, it, it was stupid. Well, I was just waiting for the... Can we get to the main event now? Main event! Because that's what I was waiting on. I was like, God damn, can we get to the main event now? Please. 
Because I don't give a fuck about this contest. I don't give a fuck about anything. Though. Well, Tommy, we are at the main event it is of WCW time. Beach Blast 92. Yes, the main event of WCW Beach Blast 92 is for the WCW World Tag Team Championships as the reigning and defending WCW Tag Team Champions. Here's the story of two brothers, Rick and Scott. The Steiner Brothers, baby. One of the best tag teams in WCW, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. As they take on another good tag team, especially in New Japan. Mm -hmm. Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Dr. Dusty Williams. And, and when I saw the four people involved in this match, beat them down. It's going to be a beatdown. It's going to be a beatdown because all four of these teams are too tough. Four of the, all four of these guys, Rick, Scott, Terry Gordy, and Dr. Dusty Williams are two bad motherfuckers. They all are, four are bad fucking tough guys. All of them are bad tough and, guys. And, and boy, did all four of these guys beat the shit out of each other. They did. And guess what? I loved it. I loved it. It was a good match. It was. But the one thing... That killed it is the finish. Yeah, the finish. Which is kind of... I can understand why they did it. Which has kind of been the whole yeah. Beach Blast thing in general, to be but honest But I can with you. see, I'm going to be honest here, on this finish, I can actually see why they did it. I know. In a way. They just don't have the match. I know, but I can just I see understand why they that did it. They wanted their top, the top WCW tag team, which is the Steiners, going against one of the top... Uh, New Japan uh, tag teams. Which of, is Terry Gordy and Steve Williams. You know, and once again, great match. They beat the dog shit out of each other. But uh, Rick gets the hot tag to Scott. Scott comes in, a couple of clotheslines to both, a couple of body slams to both. He does uh, he does the double arm suplex. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, he does that to uh, Terry Gordy. And then Tommy, he, he does the Frankensteiner. On Gordy. On and Gordy. then... Ding, ding, ding. And then the bell rings. And it's like, I was what like, what the fuck? fuck? What yeah. fuck? I was like, what the fuck's this shit? Yeah, what's going on? This is a 30-minute draw. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? 30-minute draw. I was like, you just killed this match. Thanks a lot, Rodney Atkins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that killed the match. And I was like, you motherfuckers, you. And then, and then when I saw, and then looking, I was like, okay, I guess I can see why they did it. The reason why is because... Because Dr. Death and Terry Gordy were the most dominant team in New Japan at this time. So they weren't going to lose. And and you ain't definitely going to beat the Steiners. For the WCW Tag Team titles. <laughs> to take them to Japan. Yeah, so. Once I again. Guess, I guess. Once again. Why have yeah, this Why match? have the match, yeah. But but I enjoyed the match. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. Both both teams saved faith in the, in the way that they did this right here. I don't think it was right, but. But they all, but all four teams, all four of them shook each other's hands and, and powdered. Powdered as we get Jr. and Jesse Ventura as they pretty much sign off to Tony Schiavone and, and Eric Bischoff. Yeah, and then how uh, they they kind of recap the yeah, show a little bit, and then they go back to Jesse and Jr. and they talk about come back for the Great American Bash and all this. I got one question though. Yeah, why waste fireworks in an empty building? Because as they went back to Jesse. And Jim Ross, as they're closing the show, they're like, oh, "You already see people leaving out of the crowd." You see people crowd. leaving. You see the empty seats. Yeah, yes. Why are they wasting fireworks for that? I don't know because they do. That's the a waste of money. They do the credits, and then in the background, you're seeing the fireworks go off. Why everyone's all already leaving? When people are leaving, I, don't I was know, like, I don't "That's know. a waste of money." Maybe they're old fireworks. <laughs> and then of course, they've been bitches for Great American Batch. <laughs> then we see so. Uh, of course, the names like uh, producer uh, Virgin Reynolds, uh, baby. Virgin Reynolds. Uh, yeah. and don't forget Jim Ross. Jim Ross. Tony Shavato. Uh, Keith Mitchell. Yes, right. You know so, Keith Mitchell. Uh, a, a, don't forget a, a, David Crockett. David Crockett. A lot, a lot of people that do a lot of the credits for WCW. And guys, that's the end of WCW Beach Blast '92. Tommy, worst, worst match on the card. Marcus and Greg. Yes, right off. Worst that. match on the card is Marcus Alexander Bagwell versus Greg the Hammer Valentine. What uh, what's the best match in your opinion? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the dot the uh the Falls I'm Count Anywhere match. Yeah. I'm gonna say the 30 minute Iron Man match between Steamboat and Rude, and to throw one, even though it was just a fucking draw, I'll throw the WCW World Tag Team Titles in there. I'm about to say my favorite match. Just my favorite is the 30 minute 
uh, Iron Man challenge with Rude and Steamboat. But if I had to choose, like, these are the matches you should be watching on this show. Is the Falls Count Anywhere match with the Cactus and Sting. The 30-minute Iron Man match with Rick Rude and Ricky Steamboat. And probably to throw uh, it in is uh, 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 Pillman and Flamingo. Yeah, Pillman and Flamingo was great too, and 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 the and the main event was pretty decent. It's just a shitty finish. Overall, I did enjoy. I did it enjoy over, Beach Blast over, overall. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, but guys, that is WCW Beach Blast Night Two. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it all over social media. Like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Rampage Two. You can also follow us on. X at Russell Rampage. You can also follow us on Instagram as well. And guys, you can also hit that subscribe button for more great videos coming to you guys. And we'll see you guys next time. See